Greetings and welcome to World Music Safari in this episode, the concertina. So I alluded to doing a djembe episode, however, the audio didn't come out good, and I want to do it justice because the gentleman whose djembe was being played and demonstrated was overrun by bad audio, so I want to save that for another video. So today we're doing the concertina. So I interviewed a musician who plays traditional music and sea shanties, which are very in these days, on the concertina. And the concertina is associated with pirates and rum and rascality, but really it's a unique instrument that's been around for a long time and the reason for its popularity is its portableness uh, similar to acoustic guitars that we have these days uh, the concertina could easily be played in small environments and people could sing along to them in pubs on ships or anywhere however the uniqueness of the concertina is that when you're squeezing in it's one note but as you're going this direction that note changes so there's two different notes for each button on the concertina unlike an accordion where when you play the little miniature, it looks like a miniature keyboard on the side, that note stays the same no matter what direction the bellows are going. The concertina is not like that. So in this episode, we're going to interview a musician whose name is Jen, and he plays traditional music on the concertina. This is called an Anglo squeeze box. See, the buttons are, are set up to line up under your fingers right here. There's an outer row and an inner row. This outer row is in the key of C, but depending on what song you're playing, it works in several different keys. This, this one's tuned to the key of G. Um, but you can play like A minor, D minor, and all kinds of other keys in it. Um, if you have a three row concertina, the third row would be the accidentals, like extra sharps and flats. Um, this is a diatonic instrument, so it's all set in the key. So it continues from one side to the other. Um, picture is like a very large harmonica that's split in two, so that there's half the harmonicas on one side of the instrument, the other half's over here. That's beautiful. Thank you. And um, so there is no wrong note for the key on this instrument. If um, if you wanted to play like a black key on a piano or different, um, you know, like accidental notes in a song, that would I would use my three row concertina. I didn't bring that today, but there would be a third row up here, which would have like your B flats and like a, a, a D D flat and stuff like that. So and every button has two notes. So one note going in, one note going out? Yes, and um, that makes it a lot easier than an English um, concertina where you've got a single button for every single note and you have to keep jumping around every single note like on a piano. With the Anglo, it makes um, it takes half the uh, work away from your fine motor skills to your gross motor skills, just changing direction. I'm only changing buttons about half the time. The uh, concertina, the English version, where the buttons go out from your hand, like four rows of buttons on each side, arranged entirely differently. That was invented about 1823, I think it was, by Joseph Wheatstone, and then uh, patented about three years later. And then about 50 years later, 60 years later, the Germans got hold of it and said, hey, let's rearrange it like this, more like a harmonica. It makes it a lot easier to play a whole bunch of our tunes. And um, so this is called an Anglo model as opposed to the English model. And um, this was adopted for a lot of Irish music and um, uh, English uh, hornpipes and um, Morris dancing, things like that. So this is not the original style of concertina, but to me it's a lot easier to play. Alright, that's it for this episode of World Music Safari. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll see if I can get to them. Or if you have a question for Jen, by all means, ask and I'll get an answer through him. Until next time.